Hello guys, welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. And I am Clan Lockhangers, and we are still talking about episode 5 of Discovery, because you know what? We saw a lot of stuff. A lot of good stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask you, Samuel, are you feeling okay? You look kind of sick, maybe. I mean, I haven't got a pulse. Is is that a is that a problem? I think that's a red flag. I think that's an indicator of something. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not a doctor, so... You know what? I think what would be great if I called the, the medical robots, because the GPEs are still locked in. But if the robots come help, maybe my lack of pulse won't be a big issue. But we need a professional, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great, that's good. Yeah, we're going to be talking about medical robots today. We saw, we saw some in Starfleet headquarters in the last episode of Discovery. Um, and did you notice too that the, the the robots that are in the intro to the show were also there? Yes, there was one like zipping around as well, but not focused um, on, just like there. Yes, mm. yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we got some advanced robots. They. They look like they should be working on, like, the NX-01, like, flying around space dock. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to talk about that Before today. we go into the actual design, though, I want to bring up a small thing. People, you know, we, we call out the show good and bad for multiple different reasons. And often when a 3D asset of any kind is either subpar, reused, or clearly, like, whatever. And people often say, oh, it's a TV show, they have so much time. But then you look at things like this... These are high detail models that look great, super background, super not needed. So, you know what I mean? If they can create things like this, and then other things are then so subpar, you know what I mean? Same, like, same with the alien from the first first episode, like so high detail. And then, So, I, you, the argument's tricky. I know it's a d big team, etc. But they, they throw in the this, this sort of details thrown in that are unnecessary that took time and effort. And yet other things. So I just want to bring that up because this was they were great, but... It's totally unnecessary, you know? Well, that's the, that's the thing, though. These, to me, look like modern-day, like, search-and-retrieval subs. Like, remote control subs. That first subs. one from the front, absolutely. That's exactly what I was like, thinking. Yeah. It looks like it's almost like it actually exists in the real world out there. It's only, only it's painted yellow, and it's doing exploration on the seafloor yeah. uh, remotely. So they already have a 3D model of it because they used it in the, oh. the, the, the design process for all <laughs> And so they're like, ah, oh, we'll just use that. We'll make it white. We'll put some medical stuff on it. Oh, that's funny. But that's why I said it looks like it should be working on the NX-01, because it does look like a older version of a work bee that's remote controlled. It doesn't feel advanced. But that being said, it's a medical droid. How advanced does it really need to be? Um, small replicator on board, couple of different arms that you can do different things with. I mean, the, 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 the discussion can be made for both. Um, both points on that. And so. I think both of us would be displeased if it was a floating ball of energy that created arms. We're like, that's a medical robot. What is it? It's nanotech medical. It's a cloud. You know, we wouldn't appreciate that because Star Trek doesn't really do that. So having it be a grounded sort of technology is good. But yeah, it, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily look super advanced. But it does look advanced to what we consider. But it's one of those things like Picard. Once they've already shown tech that's in Discovery, Picard doesn't look advanced anymore. And you see the same tech in Discovery, it doesn't feel advanced anymore because you've broken the cycle of, you know, Jet Reno had flying drones that look just as advanced as flying drones here. So the flying drone tech is 800 years old, whoop de doo they aren't impressive anymore. Whereas if they, if this was the first time we see those, if it hadn't been Discovery, hadn't been Picard, now we're seeing them, like, oh wow, there's finally robot drones, etc, etc. You know, the fact that Discovery has fixing robots that now go around its hull that were from 800 years ago, 900 years ago, these seem underwhelming, to say the least. So just by the how they approached visual technology breaks all of the, that's cool, in the future, because it's not anymore, you know? Yeah. Let's not forget the holographic doctor from Voyager, which is way more advanced than this. Again, you shouldn't be able to distinguish the medical tech of the future because it should look like a human. You know, it should be so advanced that you don't even notice it. <laughs> uh, whereas this is like, okay... I don't know what to think about this. I thought they were kind of cool flying around and stuff, but I, well, I mean they're extra. You know, they we we, you know, we don't see them much in the episode, but in the scene we do see them. They're flying on two levels, and one drops a container to the other, and clearly like a chill, like hey man, here you go. So they're obviously you know they're they're delivering they're they're working as as like nurses in the environment when you don't you need people to fly and move because you know, 
I don't, I don't know if they're gonna the nurses are gonna beam from their room that you know their surgical pay to this other bit in seconds that all them send the robot you know who knows what the workflow is but these are useful in that process and uh, you know we have never seen the doctor you know like a terminator turn his hand into a scalpel and use it you know what I mean so even though they could theoretically do that I think you know if you want holograms to feel like part of the team and then suddenly they can be Terminator, so these machines can like like the Exocomp in in lower decks. We just had this, so these I would think this is more like the evolution of Exocomp in a certain sense. And these, but that said, now they've got just arms. That what's ironic is that in the tile sequence you see an arm from the like current space day program, like picking or something. The exact same arms here. So it's like you, you know, but even using that visual, it's like well, that was it. You know, hundred years ago. Um, that said, though, we still use the wheel. The wheel hasn't changed. So if the wheel hasn't changed, it's the most efficient form that it needs to be. So I do like that. Like, they reach a certain plateau, and it's just about putting more tools in, I guess? I don't know. I, what do you think? I threw quite a lot out there, but it's kind of my, my yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one, one of those things. Once you get anti-grav tech, you can have things floating and flying around. I mean, it's like, that's pretty much impressive until, you know... Yeah, it's like the wheel. They still have wheels in the future on carts in the medical bay, probably. Why reinvent the wheel? You don't have to. So once you hit that certain level of tech for certain things, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just I I didn't expect it to be this archaic. It did. I mean, it it is advanced in the fact that it flies and floats and probably has a replicator on board. But the arms, I think, are a bit much. It should have. I think it should have been more simplistic. And you should have seen like a zoom. And you see an arm appear. And then maybe a replicated vial of something like appear in a little well, just thing like that the it exocomp, grabs. Just like peanut hammer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. That was already like the pinnacle of, okay, it couldn't physically touch things. That was all, but I mean, in terms of what it can create um, extra. But these are obviously secondary. And it, like you said, these could have easily been like in Lost in Space. And they just kind of kitbashed them together. Because I, I doubt these were like sketched out by someone like John Eves and then Unless they really focused on, they might have just been just throw something together because it's fine, which is fine. Um, and so you know their function isn't as key, and they didn't think anyone's going to actually look at them in this detail and, and stare at the picture for ten minutes just talking about the design. <laughs> well, as you said earlier, the two they're nurses essentially. I'm not saying the nurses aren't important because they totally are, um, but they're not going to be. These aren't going to be performing surgery most likely, and he, I'm trying to remember back to when Gray died. What? There were different droids that examined him, correct? Yeah. Um, so these these are probably just, yeah, like, here, take this to Lab Bay 3, you know? <laughs> um, they probably got compartments that have drugs so they can take, like, we need 400 things of neurosia. Because remember, they in, in the scene we saw them, I mean, they only have two sets for Starfleet Command. Fine, that's fine. Because they were, you know, in the corridors being triaged. So I'm sure these guys were, were bringing the medical drugs and equipment from the main bay like they were providing the out of out of bay service which is great you know which is great uh, but speaking of the other two though the one you're right is absolutely a, a deep sea diver the second one though is pointy mcpointerson well this looks more like a a doctor <laughs> a doctor <laughs> kind of it just it has the feel of like um one of the, the droids from star wars um can't remember which one. Um, well, there are a few, so it's one of the ones that I think in, on, in Jabba's palace. Anyway, um, it has kind of that snooty "I'm better than you" more delicate, more delicate little claspers compared to the other guys. Um, so yeah, this is probably more precision-based work. Oh, I love that we can say that based on this little robot. And I was actually looking, it, it instantly has more personality. The way its eye looks, it's, it looks like it has a mouth and an eye and a yeah, it it. it Yep, I see what you mean. Th I, like this one, you'd expect to talk to the people on the ground. What else do you require? Da -da -da. Thank you. You know that this one talks. Yeah, like this. This one I appreciate more. This one seems more advanced to me than the other ones. The other ones do seem very much like a, just a deep sea thing. But well, 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 this one gives off that work bee vibe just a little bit. So it feels like yeah. an automated helper bee. Yeah, and that's kind of where you think it might go. Um, but I do, I mean, I like the scene. It's such unnecessary detail to have them pass something to each other. And when you can transport things via com badges, I like the rustic touch. It, it showed an automatic person. I'm sure the guy that did that had fun with that scene. 
Uh, and I wonder how many obviously medical things we're gonna we're gonna see in the future. I hope they get more more life. But as I said, they put time and effort into these. So unnecessary, but an appreciate appreciated thing. And an episode crammed full of new costumes. I mean, as we talked with our episodes on them, so many costumes. This episode, they must have... I mean, we talked about how the other ones, uh, some of them felt somewhat cheaper, more condensed. You know, spending 21 minutes in one set, the bar set of, you know, leads into the time needed to make this sort of stuff. You know, I kind of get the sense they... they which is good. That, that worked, you know. Um, same Mandalorian. Go simple so you can really uh, impress us later. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And there, were, and there were lots of ships. We'll have other ship videos coming up because we've got some new stuff, and we're hopefully f hoping for new stuff in the next episode. So... Uh, stay tuned for that, guys, as well. But, so you don't miss that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, click the notification bell icon like to all, and click like on this video if you like medical droids. And nurses, click like. If you don't hit click like, that means you don't like nurses and you don't respect what they do. And and if you don't want the overlords of AI destruction in the future to wipe out human race, be nice to androids and robots today. Give a like for them, because they'll appreciate so it in the future. They'll check the internet history and they'll see who liked the videos about robots and they'll know that you're a good person if you have. So click so, that like button, guys. And thank you to the evil overlords, although it was the, the good leader robots for allowing this video to stay up in the 23rd century. We appreciate it. This measure of history that we present to you, O oh lords of, of the universe. Thank you. And speaking of thanking the overlords, we want to thank you guys for helping us go. Um, you guys... Clicking that like button, sharing, doing all that fun stuff really helps us out. Plus, joining our lives as well and supporting the channel. And this is where Samuel steps in and tells you all about lives and how you can support the channel and help us create free content for everyone to enjoy. What's great about the lives, especially this week with all this great stuff, is that we have some amazing conversations. You guys have amazing theories. We talk about them. We develop them. It's a great interactive relationship. And... By you super chatting your thought, you get to the head of the queue in terms of what we read. We have to read them all. It supports the channel. The more we get, the more we can do. And you've seen how much free content we do every single week. But that needs those few people super chatting, Patreon, PayPal, all the normal stuff. If you know 100 of you give, then 5,000 of you can enjoy for free. It's that sort of ratio because you guys are very generous and we don't ask for very much. So if you can, please do. And super chat is the sort of funnest way. So if you can, thanks in advance. That's right. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. And I am Connor Combs. Bye, guys. I'll see you guys later.